Yo, what's good? It's your boy. Mental game for kings. Um, I've got this video today where I'm going to be really emphasizing the importance of feeling something to be. And I don't necessarily mean um, an emotion per se um, in the same way that you can feel an apple in your hand without feeling necessarily a certain emotion, um, well, at least an emotion in terms of what we understand, i.e. anger, happiness, whatever. Um, you may already be having a certain emotion while you're holding this apple, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. Um, so the I want I want to go into the feeling of things and how it's from this feeling of being um, that things manifest or things are right now. What I think is important to understand is um, it's from these states or it's from these present tense feelings of being that things come about, right? And they come through a form of expression rather than a form of attraction or manifestation. Um, And... What I've found really is to go to the end. And and this is going to be quite profound. And um, I hope this makes sense for you guys. And um, you guys can also experience the the fruits of, um, of what I'm trying to say. So if the key or the, or the, or the, the secret is essentially getting to the feeling that we would have um, if our desire was fulfilled, right? If that's the key, then the way I look at it is, well, I look at all of my desires and I look at all the things that I am seeking and I actually ask myself this question, and you can you can actually, without even focusing on your your tangible desire per se, this this can work really well. Is asking yourself, um, well, why is it that you actually want what you want? Why is it that you actually want your desire? Why is it that you actually want that nice relationship? Why is it that you actually want that nice car? Why is it that you want that nice? Um, job and if you break it down it is essentially there will be a feeling attached to the end of that desire every single one you have you know even as something as um, in terms of survival such as you know hunger um, you know you you you, you you want to eat because, you know, it keeps you alive or you want to eat because, you know, um, you, you'll feel, you'll no longer feel hungry, right? Um, or, you know, you want to, you want to have a million dollars, but why do you want to have a million dollars? You want, you, you, you know, why, why don't you want a million and, why do you not want a million and five dollars, right? <laughs> Because that is an idea of what you think is enough to make you feel rich or feel wealthy or feel whatever the emotion is that you want. Because one person could be given a million dollars and feel completely different to another person that's given a million dollars, right? A person that's maybe struggling with their health if they're given a million dollars, they're probably not going to be thinking, well, it has much use to them because in their mind, they're just thinking about survival. They're just thinking about, well, I want to be healthy, right? 
whereas someone that is maybe healthy and has all these other areas of their life sort of sorted out except for their finances, a million dollars will make them feel wonderful. So what I'm trying to get at, guys, is that the, the feelings that we seek are a lot of the times come from a place of um, come from a place of void, or a lot of our desires are coming from a, a void almost that we we're looking to fill, and and I'm not using the word void in, in a negative sense. I'm just saying there's a, there's a void, right? And the way I want you to look at this or conceptualize this is by looking at um, this void as something that needs to be filled, right? And I believe the whole undercurrent or the whole underlying thing of this all is that, well, if we're living in desire, um, we're always going to be sort of on that treadmill and sort of we're going to we're going to actually feel incomplete within our being. Right. Um, we're going to feel like we we don't have or we're going to feel like we are. We are always seeking and, 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 and we're never going to be actually content or at peace or, or, you know, um, feeling the wish fulfilled per se. Um, so the way I like to look at it is, well, okay, what, what is essentially this one thing that encompasses all of my desires and what would be this one thing that would basically summarize a feeling that, would mean that I have or have experienced all of the things that I desire and it is that of no longer desiring right it is that of like if you were to have all these things you you, you don't think about them anymore you have your iPhone in your hand you have your you know you have your job you have all these things you're not you're not consciously consciously thinking well I have this I no you just you almost don't think of it anymore. It's like it's become this thing that's just, you know, it's yours, right? And I think and I truly believe wholeheartedly that if you realize something is already yours or you are the person you want to be right now in this second, how would you really feel? And I think genuinely, if you look at the end of it, like we discussed earlier, if we're looking at the feeling of things, well, what would the feeling generally be if you were the person or you were the, you were, you have all the things that you're seeking. Like if you, if we break it down to the end, why we want the thing in the first place? Well, we worked out it was because it's for a feeling it would give us, right? Okay, well then, what would be the feeling of being the person or, or, um, having those things? Well, ultimately, it would be almost like a sense of completion or a sense of sort of no longer desiring, right? Um. Because the way I also look at it is I, I believe our mind is so, you know, intelligent in a way where you, it's almost like your desires are always there already. Like you don't have to sort of think of a desire anymore. Like you, you I think you have a desire a lot of time because you, you, you there's a, there's a party that's almost in pain, right? And I think a lot of our desires come from pain a lot of the time well maybe I'm using the wrong word but I think it comes from there's an element of us that wants to experience that or there's something of us that wants to satisfy that so it's almost like an it's like an itch that we want to scratch but it's like we 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 then we then that's why we want to fulfill it that's because not every single one of us have the same desires do we you know um you know if you if you if you if you cut yourself you know um um, I remember, I remember a, a while back, I, 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 not that long ago, but a couple of months ago, I, I cut my arm. Um, and I was just thinking, well, I need to get this stitched up. But I was only thinking I wanted that to happen because of the situation I was in, you know? Um, I wasn't. I wasn't thinking of that before I cut my arm, you know. Um, it wasn't a desire of mine to to, to get stitched up. Um, so this is what I mean. I, I think a lot of our desires are coming from a place of there's almost like a pain point, and we're trying to we're trying to, you know, 
feel it from that perspective. But the thing is, we've identified with the, the person that's in pain, or we've identified ourselves with the person that's in desire, right? Um, as opposed to the one that is um, fulfilled, or the one that already is or already has, you know. Um, and you have to realize as well, like you, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of us are sort of in this position where we are, we are trying to change our thoughts, or we're trying to change the way we think, or we're trying to change the way we, you know, um, think. But if you're always trying to change your thoughts, you're going to be continuously in this battle, um, and you're never going to win because your thoughts are your thoughts are being produced from. Um, your thoughts are being produced from your your state, right? You ever had a wonderful day and then it's just like you still may think something bad, but it just doesn't do anything to you, you know, because you, you're just feeling too good, right? Or you could be having a terrible, terrible day and you have this one bad thought and it just, it just spirals into all these other crazy thoughts, you know? Um... So, so the key is we're looking for a change in state. We're looking for a change in feeling because in this feeling, we then have our thoughts start to change as well. Like the way we are, the way we speak, the way we, whatever it is that it just changes, you know. Um, and it's more, how would I put it? It's just, it's, it's less of a battle, you know. You don't have to, you know, fight with your reasoning mind you don't have to worry about changing your thoughts so much because you, if you're feeling good if you're feeling good your thoughts are naturally better anyway you're naturally assuming better things anyway because you're feeling good you know someone that's feeling confident or is in a state of confidence they're not you know second guessing themselves when they speak or they're not second guessing themselves when they you know um want to want to you know go go and talk to a beautiful woman or, 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 you know, they want to, you know, in a job interview, they, they're not second guessing themselves, but you're in a state of confidence. They're just, they're naturally acting or behaving confident. And as a result, their thoughts are that of a confident person because that's who they've identified themselves with, right? Um, but to, to get into the practical use of this, so, so it's essentially just going, um, I say practical, but this is all being practical. It, it's, the way I look at it is the understanding is practical because I think sometimes if someone just says, hey, do this technique, do that technique, and people just try to do it, but they don't have an understanding of it, it's almost like, well, okay, well, how does that work? Why does that work? You know, that's, I mean, that's how I always worked, especially when I was in school. It was like, people, like, I'd be taught and I'd be, I'd be kind of like, well, yeah, but, and I'll, I'll always be like, well, and, and maybe this is my nature and I've always been one to question things and sort of, um, you could say, I, I don't, I don't like to be sort of told what to do. Um, not for, for, for so much that, that reasoning, but more so because I, I want to fully understand something. And if I feel like I don't understand something, I, I don't feel like I can apply it for myself. It's almost like there's, there's holes that need to be filled. It's like, well, it's almost like I can't trust the information I've been given because it's like, well, hold on. I don't fully understand it. So uh, let me let it's it's less about that. It's more about um the need to understand. So I think that's why I'm so um, peculiar about the the way I talk about things and and the way I want to share things because I think it's important to have an understanding um, because it, it makes it much easier to apply things without without resistance or sort of going well you know because because something may work for you and then all of a sudden you're like well that worked well and then you 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 meet a you meet a bump in the road and then all of a sudden you're like well you try to do the same thing again, but now it's like it's not working. So I think sometimes you can you can you can almost be lucky um, when something works, but then but then when you you know try to be more conscious with it and it's not working, you sort of you you reach a hurdle and you don't know how to get over it, which is where I think the understanding comes in. Um, so going back to what I was saying in terms of I guess more practical, even though this was all practical, um, is. Just realizing that that, that it's it's the feeling you seek. So so the key is to almost get into that place of no longer desiring. Um, and what I've found is the easiest way to do this is to simply, you know, almost.
want to just get into like a meditative state and, and, and close your eyes and literally just almost have this conversation with yourself. You're like, well, what am I seeking? And you, you know, it's almost like your subconscious will say, well, you're seeking a feeling or you're seeking this or you're seeking that. Or at first it might tell you, well, you're seeking the tangible thing, which may be, I don't know, a car or a relationship or whatever. But then you ask, okay, but what, why, why do I really want that? And you'll, you'll, you'll find it's a feeling. Well, okay, well, then you can ask yourself, well, what would the feeling be like if I already have it? And, and you'll probably reach the feeling of like, well, you no longer want it or you no longer, not that you no longer want it, but you're no longer chasing after it because you have it. And then you sort of just allow yourself to bathe in the experience of being that or having it, you know. Just realise that you can you can just, you know, you just relax yourself, you, you might do some breathing and you just sort of just... It's almost like the realisation that that's what you're after, the feeling, is a relief in and of itself because it's like you we already know we can give ourselves feelings in our mind, you know. You can conjure up a dream... Um, while you're asleep and it can feel real yet you wake up and it's you realize it was just a dream but in reality it was all happening within you so it's almost like a relief to know that you can do this within your being um and then you sort of just allow yourself to just go there you say well okay i'm going to experience this now i'm going to experience no longer desiring as a whole or you know if you want to if you maybe feel like you can't do that just yet well just picture yourself you know, and what I found helpful sometimes, if you can't go right to the end just yet, just imagine a short scene that would, would imply that that's already fulfilled, right? Um, if you can't go right to the feeling, because I think the imagining the imagining helps you get to the feeling, you know. Um, but then when you when you sort of practice it a bit more, you can I think you can really just dive straight in and go right to the end and just bathe in the feeling. Um, and then you'll almost realize, well, and you'll know you've done it right when you when you actually don't want it. Like, not that you don't want it anymore, but you're like you're not chasing after the thing because you generally feel like it's yours or you have it or you've experienced it. So you're like, well, okay. Like it's almost like this: if you're if you're you know some some people they like to drink, you know, well they want to have a drink before they've had their first drink after maybe a long week of work. They're like, okay, well I want my drink. They really want that relief or the drink or they want to you know they they want to have a drink, but then after they've had a few, they're like sort of like well the they don't feel so good after so many now. Now it's like, well, they don't want it anymore. They, they actually don't want it anymore, you know? Um, I don't know if that was a good analogy or not, but I think you, you get what I'm trying to say. Um, it's like you've experienced it now. So I was like, well, you, what well, doesn't make sense for you to, you know, well, maybe food's a better analogy. After you've had a big meal, you know, you, you don't want to, you don't want it anymore. You've, you've eaten the hamburger, you know? You don't want, I mean, maybe you do want another one. I don't know, I, mean, I sometimes like to have a couple hamburgers. <laughs> um, but anyway, when I'm extra ravenous. Um, but you get what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah, um, I hope this video helped you and um, gives you a deeper understanding. Yeah, Peace, power, prosperity, and love always. It's been your boy.